Lounging Sun. All right, welcome oh, back wow. to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, and back with me again, I got my boy Mario. Hasn't been on the show for uh, a little bit, um, yep. but he's gonna he's joining me to continue the Image 30th anniversary coverage. And we decided we were gonna talk about Haunt, a book that I hadn't read until just recently, hmm. but it's by so many favorite, so many of my favorite creators. You got Robert Kirkman writing, McFar- yeah. Todd McFarlane, uh, Ryan Otley, Greg Capullo. I mean, that's just like all heavy hitters, in my opinion. I think we're going to talk about, I think we decided we're going to talk about the first two volumes, which is the hardcover that you have. It collects the first 12 issues. Right. Um, so Ryan Ollie's only a part of the first arc, and then Capullo takes over uh, completely on the art duties, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah, this is actually where Greg met uh, FCO and Jonathan Glap- Glapion. Glapion? Those, oh, they're weird. The that, yeah, they're the... They're the on Batman. Yeah, that's... Oh, so, that, so this is the first pairing that yeah. they have? Oh, interesting. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, I don't know why this fell under my radar. I think that the, when this came out, I mean, I'm guessing if you're talking New 52 Batman, this is just, pro- this is 2010. Yeah, uh, this is right before that happened. Was, so that's when I was like reading comics, but like I wasn't fully immersed as I was before and as I am now. Yeah, but, well, uh, and, I mean, I don't think many people read this book. I don't really know any people that even really cared about this. And this came out. A year and a half before uh, Venom, the Rick Remender Agent Venom stuff came out, which oh, okay. has kind of a similar premise, if you think about it. I haven't really read any Agent Venom. I know I have a like vague knowledge of Agent Venom, yeah. but I didn't read that either. So, um, but yeah, it hits on so many of the things that all of the creators are known for, right? Like, there's definitely Spawn elements. There's a little yeah. bit of Spider-Man elements, even yep. too, yeah. with the way he like swings and shit yep. with his fucking symbiote. I, I love the book. I'm kind of pissed that it's hard to get the other volumes and the single issues are just like, I'm not paying that yeah. on, on eBay. That's just out of control. But um, I, I, I like the, the concept of like, you know, his brother, Daniel Kilgore's a main character, right? And yeah. like his brother, he's a, he's a priest sleeping with a hooker. Yeah. And his brother, who's like this like secret, you know, undercover agent, covert agent, um, dies and then like, basically is kind of haunting him yep. but becomes the symbiote with which he becomes haunt yep i i liked it i mean, dude i'm telling you like i was kind of pissed that it took me this long <laughs> to read it because i think you mentioned it to me like i knew of the cup co- like i remembered the cover of of issue one or i remembered seeing the costume and i think that you know like with all the spawn stuff that mcfarland's been doing um you know like he brought haunt back yeah, yeah. That spawns universe. So that kind of like piqued my interest again. And um, I just, I fucking, I really, really dug this book. Yeah, I really liked it. I mean, it, it just has has some of the kind of elements of spawn where there's, because even you can start seeing hints of it where there's kind of like another figure. You see him at the, like at the end where he starts living with his girlfriend, which is the prostitute that he meets in the beginning. Uh, but there's like a shadow thing that's kind of following him. Yeah. To start alluding to there being more supernatural things going on that you don't really see so far. Uh, but it's got elements of the supernatural bits from Spawn, but mixed with a character that's a little bit more superhero y, like Spider Man ish. Um, which I, I just really like the combination. And I like the fact that he's kind of a, he's an outsider. He's meeting up with his, with this, with, he gets involved into the secret agent stuff, and he's, but he doesn't really know what's going on. Uh, I also really like all the scenes whenever, he's telling something to his brother and the other people in the room are like, what the hell's going on? But then he's just something and they're like freaking out. Like anytime he finds out that his brother keeps cheating on his wife with multiple women and he freaks out and everybody else is like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. He looks like a schizophrenic kind of, yeah. like, he's like hearing voices in his head. Yeah. I, I thought that that was, I mean, that's signature like Kirkman infusing stuff with like humor, even though there's a lot of seriousness to yeah. the characters themselves. I mean, it's not like a jokey book, but there is that element that he, I think he kind of, he threads the line kind of in right. a good way, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that he is, he's kind of a loser, you know, and he hate. I think what, what I like too is that he hates his brother. Yeah. You know, and you don't know why at first, you know, like the, the way we're, in, I liked how we're introduced, like he's in confessional, you know? Yeah. So he's like trying to like, relieve himself of the fucking killing that he's doing and then eventually you know like i like that 
the premise is is given to us in such a way that like you don't have all the information but you're you're thrust in real quick and then slowly he builds it out yeah. for that first arc um but yeah you don't know why he hates him obviously you talked about how he gets mad when he's finds out he's cheating on his wife and that's because he stole him from his brother which is why he fucking which yeah. is why he can't stand him so it's like i i don't know he the brother like he's not completely hateable you know but you yeah. kind of should you kind of should hate him if you're you know because you're at i mean like daniel kilgore is the main protagonist so yeah. he's really who you should be rooting for but yet you don't really hate i don't know i didn't hate the brother i think he's a douchebag yeah finding well out. I, I think that he also does a good job of framing his perspective and i like that scene where he like apologizes where he's like because you find out about the other one because at first you find out that one of the one women in the agency he cheated on his wife with yeah and then he, then you find out he, there's another agent that he cheated on her with also but there he kind of felt like he found his soulmate and he says like if you cared about her as much as i care about uh, i forgot her name then I'm really sorry because I, I could imagine how you felt. Yeah. And like it, 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 I think that the dynamic between the two brothers, one of the things that really sold me because that's kind of like the whole premise is, you know, the it's brothers the, haunting him. Right. Yeah. And then you kind of see them like why they hate each other and the fact that they have to work with each other and your brother's literally haunting you. So there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Uh, but that dynamic's pretty, I thought it was pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I always really liked this book. I, I, I've never really met many people that liked it. Um, but I think like the art's fucking great. It's like classic Capullo that's got the same kind of vibe from like Spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, and also a lot of McFarlane stuff. Like a lot of the stuff that the visuals are a lot, remind you a lot of McFarlane's Spider Man and Spawn. Yes. Yeah. There's I a love lot the- of swinging, swinging bits where you see it looks just like exactly the same kind of position that Spider Man would swing. Oh, for sure. I mean, even the covers, I mean, you yeah. could literally just draw over it and put a Spider Man costume over it and it looks like a Spider Man pose. Yeah. You know, I think that he, I mean, he leans into it. I mean, he's done it. He did it with Spawn when he took over Spawn too. He kind of leaned into some of those elements he was known for. And I think that he did it with this too, but I think he got paired with a really good writer this time, you know, as yeah. opposed to like early Spawn was not, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, the yeah. best writing and even moving forward. I don't think Spawn necessarily was ever the best written book, but yeah. I think this, this Kirkman just, I, I, I don't know why we don't see more. I think you've told me too that, you like brought a book to a sighting. Yeah. 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 So my my copy is signed by everybody but uh McFarlane. I have uh Kirkman, Otley, and Capullo. Mm-hmm. And they had a signing at Earth to Comics with uh Kirkman and Otley for Invincible. And I, I was like the only person that showed up with a hot book. And yeah, they were kind of just making fun of it. Uh, it's weird. Which I, I get the feeling they probably didn't really have a good experience with McFarlane. I mean, you hear that a lot with people that work on the Spawn book. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen writers not actually do their runs. Yeah, Brian, like Wood, Brian, was, Brian Wood. Right. Yeah. Um, John, John Boyd Boy Myers. Myers is, yep. you know? So I could see that, but it is a shame because I think the concept for this book is really good. And I think that, um, again, when I'm talking about like Kirkman and stuff and his writing injecting humor, I think his relationships between characters that he has in his books are always like, that's his strong suit. Like yeah. invincible. It's not necessarily a super heroics that is good. I think it's the relationships between mm-hmm. the characters, which is why it's such a, like one of my favorite books of all time. Um, and then you have walking dead, obviously you have outcat all, all his books are like heavy yeah. characterization, but the brothers, I, I like where we start with them. And then at least in terms of what I read, where it ends up you know yeah. that they become closer and they have a better understanding of yeah. one another and another aspect i thought was um well that i that i like is that he even though he has a symbiote and he has powers first of all it drains him yeah. of of power but he doesn't just like and he ends up joining the agency but he doesn't just join and that's it like he actually trains yeah. you know it's not just like okay he's got this power and now he's just ready to go they make him go through all of these fucking like yeah. rig- all this rigorous training yeah which they, it's that gag where he's like oh what are we doing kung fu knives yeah. weapons and he's like yeah. gives him a pencil yeah 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 no and like i think at that point they set up that time went by and that's also why their, their friendship or their relationship between the brothers is better is because they've been training as a team for haunt for some time and i like that you know then leads to that scene where they there's a scene where they say like oh we're sending in haunt 
And yeah. that's like the, the he's a weapon now for the agency that gets sent out. There is some stuff though that like I, since like I said I haven't read past it, but they kind of like hint that they're like I th- forgot who it was, but like somebody recognized him as a haunt. Yeah, right? that's like, the the woman in the in the cell because right, he, right, he gets right. arrested. She yes. like is creepy and like does the symbol that he has in his chest. Does that fucking like? Yeah. Do they... So that comes into play later on, and okay. it, it starts leading because. I think in, the, in this first like 12 issues, it's it's all about set up for the relationship between the brothers and establishing it as him, the agent haunt. Mm-hmm. And then the next step was introducing the supernatural stuff that you start seeing little hints here and there. Uh, and that's that was the next thing that happens. And his relationships with the ex-wife slash his ex-girlfriend stuff also in whose relationship with Charity slash Autumn, all that stuff kind of keeps going forward. They all have a really interesting interesting relationship with women too, which is also kind of a theme that occurs okay. later on. All right. And then the Joe Casey stuff you said wasn't. No, there's a, the relationship with the character. So Daniel, him having a relationship is a recurring thing. Then he, there's a relationship he gets into right at the end of where Capullo and McFarlane are still involved. And then as soon as the next volume starts, the art completely changes and then that person gets killed off immediately. So all that setup gets killed off, and then no, we're going to do our own thing. So it really loses momentum. Um, and then that only lasted like something like five to seven issues, and then that get canceled. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's weird to me that this didn't, um, this wasn't more successful. I feel like almost if it would come out now, it would do better. Oh, yeah. I, well, I think it's because Spawn wasn't successful at the time. Yeah. McFarlane wasn't really a thing anymore. This is a, this is a time where you know all those issues now that are worth like fucking three hundred dollars because there's only printed like fifty copies because no one yeah. was reading Spawn. This yeah. is that era. This is that time period where Spawn literally was selling single digits at shops where you know collectors. I was one of the four people that got it when this it's, book was coming out. Yeah, it sucks because like I could totally see this if it came out nowadays. I mean, we oh, see the numbers yeah. of the Scorch and the rest yeah. of the Spawn universe of books. I, I, I mean, to me, this is the logical thing to do. Is you relaunch this book i don't yeah. know why you know like you have him guest starring i'm not sure like i haven't read every issue of spawn i have quite a bit i have the first hundred and then i have sporadic um yeah. up until 300 and then i have every issue or i think i have the arc before 300 and then to current right and then i'm reading all the all the spinoffs but this seems like why not why why don't you launch this book yeah i think he's hinting at bringing it back because he, he he's brought he's appeared in i think two issues so far hasn't really directly done anything but he's around i could see him bringing him back but i don't know it would be the same yeah because now he's established as a, as a spawn side character as opposed to this where he was just haunt so yeah. I, I i i would be great if it was like this and if he had art like capullo but i don't imagine that would be the case and i don't i imagine it would be just be part of an extension of the spawn universe which is what's happening now you know, like the Scorch team is all still revolve around each other, right? Which I don't, I don't know that it'd be the same. But I, I completely agree that if this, if this was a book, like if this was a thing where they created Haunt and he was going to come out next year and they hyped it up, oh, a hundred thousand percent, this would be a crazy pre-order book. It'd have a shit ton of variants. It'd have a shit ton of versions and foil covers and all that shit. You know, CGC fucking autograph a hundred percent. Yeah, because I mean, you got Kirkman, McFarlane, and Capullo and Otley, which are all names as a creative team. It's, it's insane. Yeah, but even if it, I'm saying like, even if it didn't have those creators, I think that this book would still do numbers. I, I mean, I could see it being fun and something an image that worked, but I think with the creators, then it, it would put it to a point where it would sell like crazy too. Yeah, Capullo also wasn't as he was a well-known name, but I don't think he was. I think Batman's what really. A hundred percent. I mean, this is before Batman, so I, this yeah. is before he was a name that everybody knew. Yeah, it's crazy to me that this. Uh, you know, I mean, four. We get four traits. Was that uh, eighteen issues? No, more than that. Little, little more than eighteen. I think. Yeah. That was, they did. Yeah. It wasn't twenty-four. I don't think they did twenty-four. It issues. was like it, around sixteen is when the last portion of Capullo McFarlane ends, and then. 16 to like 20 or something like 21 is when it just stops you know what else i think it also leans heavy into 
without it's not full blown like non nineties style of a book, but it definitely feels a little bit. As I was reading, I'm like, this could have come out in the nineties. Oh, hundred hundred percent. This, this is, is just better. That, it's just better writing. That's, it's something that could have come out around 2001, 1989, where this is when Capullo was hot on Spawn. Like, I totally could have seen this been a spinoff. I mean, that's why it's great, and that's why people like Spawn now because you read it and it feels like something that came out in 1999 or whatever. Yeah, and, and what I I mean, like, not to say that I don't like Ollie's art because I'm a huge Ryan Ollie fan. You know, I mean, Invince, like I said, I love Invincible, but it's it's weird to see his art like this. You know, with not it's not fully his style. It's not his regular inker. Yeah, over him, and I kind of dig it. To be honest with you, I I like McFarland's inks over over ollie i think this might be some of my favorite ryan ollie yeah art. but then when when capullo takes over you can see that this is his bread and butter oh yeah because this is this is just a spawn, extension of spawn and this is what he was doing yeah no for, i mean i don't or what, don't deny that yeah i think it really 12, for me the art years. takes off it takes off when it's capullo i mean look at look at stuff like this you know i mean this shit's yeah. fucking it's yeah. eye candy dude it's so good i i love it i mean I this think like a page like a double spread like this yeah. I don't think I've ever seen. This might be the first time I've seen a double page spread. Or just utilized the face like that. Yeah. Just a face fucked up. You close up with friggin' Bastion face. I mean, it's amazing to me that prior to this or prior to Batman, because like I knew the name, right? Like I knew, okay, he used Draw Spawn. Like that's that's what he's known for. Yep. But why wasn't he being utilized before? at marvel and dc like i know he had his start at marvel i get books like kesar and fucking x-force he had uh substance abuse problems i mean he's even talked about how mcfarland kind of accidentally let it be a more of a problem because he could at a certain point because capullo originally did a cover on issue 16 of spawn i think and he didn't start being a regular until later on but he has a relationship with capullo early on and at a certain point he learned to trust capullo so much that he kind of did like the Mar Marvel method of just barely basically describing a rough idea of what the issue was going to be and let Capullo just go. But that meant that Capullo could count on money from Spawn all the time. And unfortunately, it was a time where he had some issues and so he wasn't doing too well. And he's even talked about how it was kind of a problem. It was a good thing because he could count on McFarland supporting him and helping him out as a friend, but also he didn't have the, he didn't have the struggle. He didn't have to like go out and try to get books because he could just count on money from Spawn and McFarland. So it wasn't until like, because Angel Medina took over on Spawn around issue 100. And so that's when Capullo kind of transitioned out. And I think that's when he started sobering up of like trying to figure out how to get out of. So there's a long Spawn. period where he just wasn't doing comics. Who, Capullo? Yeah. Yeah, he would, he would just do covers. So at, a, at around 100, Capullo stopped doing the interiors. And then Angel, a guy named Angel Medina took over. But Capullo still did the covers up until like. 130 140 so there was like a period of like three years oh wow Pula was just doing covers and he was just getting paid for that and i think that's when he was kind of struggling you would I, well i was gonna say you you wouldn't you wouldn't like know that by meeting him that he was that that he had that kind of problem but then again you know i had that kind of problem too so i mean i think yeah. people that meet me now probably would have said the same thing it's crazy he had like a complete like resurgence of of his yeah. art you know yeah, like, it was super crazy to me because i i literally was buying capullo art since the beginning of spawn yeah and so to me it was like i know this guy i've been following his career the whole time basically and then all of a sudden to go to haunt and then to batman and now everybody knows who he is yeah it was really weird and i i actually feel like and he's kind of admitted that he's got, he's got, he was a little neutered by dc uh, of course because he wasn't allowed to do as crazy of a of spreads and the way he would do panels and spawn um but yeah that's pretty nuts and now he's like everybody knows who capullo is i guarantee you if like now they'd probably let him do whatever the fuck he wanted oh 100 there's no way he's neutered like by dc at this yeah. point having done what he's done for them he's gotta fucking do any if he did any book they're just gonna be like do what you want i didn't feel like last night on earth you know, wasn't one of my favorite Batman stories yeah. that he did, but I thought it didn't feel like they were holding him back. Yeah, he, I think he started experimenting. Like, I remember there was a, he did like an Instagram post where someone like, he, he wrote like a, someone commented on a panel or a page where he experimented with the panel. He was like, oh, this is really cool. I've never seen something like that. He's like, oh, you should just see my Spawn stuff. That's when I really was experimenting. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Creech and seeing what he does with his own book now. 
when he kind yeah. of gets to kind of run wild and do whatever he wants. Yeah, I've never read Creech. I mean, you probably like it because you like 90s stuff, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's not great. I mean, I don't read the 90s comics just for the writing. I read it to look at the art, you know? <laughs> and that's what it is. Yeah, it's just him drawing a big monster that punches things. So It'd be interesting to see if he fucking revives that. It'd be cool, especially with the 30th anniversary of Image Comics in this year. No. You know, he's got time to do it. That'd be cool to kind of... I'd like to see more, you know, more creators that or a part of early image come back and do some yeah. stuff. I think that'd one, be interesting. One of the interesting bits about McFarlane's history is that he also helped introduce a lot of people to each other um, because Sam and Twitch was originally my Brian, Brian Michael Bendis. And that's where Maliv met Bendis. Oh, weird. I didn't know that they met on that book. Yeah. That's who drew Sam and Twitch. No. So it, it was at a certain point. So there was multiple creators on Sam and Twitch and multiple artists. Like Ashley Wood would do a lot of that. Yeah, uh, that's covers. what I thought. Yeah. Uh, but at a certain point, Maliv switched out, and I think it was in sort of the end of Sam and Twitch. And that's when Maliv met uh, Bendis. And then they go and do. And they go off and do their, their, their stuff. Uh, yeah. And then here is where Capullo met a lot of the inking and coloring, FCO and Jonathan. Which yeah. That's then what, led the Batman. That's so. crazy. Yeah. I, I really did. I mean, not that I ever thought, I just assumed. It was on Spawn, but again, like I haven't, like I haven't read every issue of Spawn, so I don't, I don't know how long the, the relationships. But that's crazy because they're still together, even with the new book. We have demons, the yeah. the creator own book that him and Scott Snyder are doing. Um, yeah, I think he just established a relationship. He kind of just stuck around. So yeah, I mean, when you find it's it's like Jim Lee with Scott Williams, you know, like that's the only dude that's going to ink him. Yeah. He doesn't have anybody else inking, and I think that once you find, especially like it's so rare now that a penciler has an inker yeah you know most of the time you just see artists you don't see penciler and inker as much as you did like when we were growing up yeah well this, yeah this is kind of old school guys that still did the and they still do traditionally again i fucking love this book i think it's it is to me i i like this capullo art better than i like his batman stuff i think he's definitely same you same. know i don't think that his batman art is bad but this shit is just fucking... he got a little bit more like cartoony and more that animated kind of vibe to it and this is like a lot more 90s a lot of yeah. detail a lot of stuff happening but it's just very dynamic and just it just reminds you of that era awesome dude i i highly highly recommend i like i said like earlier the third and fourth volumes i think the fourth volume is not uh with capullo and mcfarlane and kirkman but the first two are pretty easy to find and they're not fucking more than cover price the third volume which would be the end of their run um, that one was harder to find, but I highly recommend checking this book out. If you're a fan of Capullo or Spawn, 90s comics, this is this is a fucking really entertaining book. I mean, I couldn't put it down. I was pissed that I couldn't read the next, <laughs> you know? I was really, like, I, I think I was halfway done with volume one, or maybe I just finished volume one right before I started reading volume two, and I started looking, how can I get the next one? And then I started seeing the eBay prices, $80 for... It's pretty nuts because and it's that's and it's also another one of these books where like eight years ago it was worth nothing. Yeah, I think and, a lot of it has to do with the spawn numbers going up. You know, everything and really '90s stuff, all '90s comic books, ones that were fucking in quarter bins are even worth money now. Yeah, you know, even though yeah. they're printed a lot. I mean, it makes sense that this third trade would be a little bit more because probably you know, each graphic novel subsequently like stores order yeah. less and less. So yeah. that kind of makes sense to me. But I found a volume four that was cheap, which just goes to show you that nobody gives a shit about it. I don't that. understand. I, and I, but I, but I, I don't know. If they bring it back, I would see McFarlane reprinting it in some no. kind of different collected that's what I, edition. That's what I was hoping for because I know he's he did that video on Facebook where he said that all the Spawn stuff is going to come back into print, all the trades, the hardcovers, He's bringing all of it back and he's going to continue stuff and stuff that hasn't been in print yet is now going to be in print. Um, hopefully haunt is part of that. Cause that, to me, this is an extension. Like you said, it's an extension of the spawn universe now right. based on what he's been doing with um, scorched and shit. But I love the book. I think it's, it's fucking dope and I highly recommend it. Um, but I have nothing else to to say about it unless you have something else. Wasn't. No, I mean, I, I really like it. I've, I always, talked about it but I, did, I don't know many people that like it that are or, or like have read it i think tim's the only one that i've ever met that like read it everybody else they either have no interest or i tell them to read it and they read it and they're like it's, it's fine it's just kind of 
kind of that 90s vibe that doesn't really work nowadays i don't know dude 90s is making a comeback in all sorts of places people wearing genco jeans again you know <laughs> Fuck, you know, I, yeah. I swear to God, I see young people all the time dressing like. Oh, yeah. No, I've seen it. Like the 90s. Even skaters and shit with the, the baggy stuff from the 90s is back. Yeah, it's crazy. And the comic books are making a resurgence. I mean, all the 90s, all the stuff that we were a fan of as kids is being pulled back to the forefront, it seems like. Right. You know, so hopefully, um, even though this isn't 90s, I, I hope we see more of this. Hopefully it, all of it's back in print uh, so everybody can check it out. But um like i said first volume second volume pretty easy to find third one you'll have a little bit harder time to find but uh definitely worth checking out and uh that's all we got on haunt yep if you're not already following us make sure you follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at the comic lounge like follow and subscribe at the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video goes up and continue to uh check out the videos as we mario and i dylan and i um continue to celebrate image comics 30th anniversary and on that note we're out